Okay, this tutorial is actually a follow-up to a previous um, YouTube tutorial called Create Two Cyanotype Prints from One Session. And in that one, I was talking towards the end about making cyanotypes out of more fragile papers, like this one right here. These are handcrafted papers uh, that I purchased from a company. I'll put the information below the video. But through a process of layering, you can actually get two prints, uh, one on the very thin, more fragile paper, and one on thicker watercolor paper. And depending on the amount of sunlight exposure, you can also get differences in the colors and the patterns. So in this video, I, I had said in that video that I would have a follow-up, and I did tack on a little demonstration at the end of that first video, create two cyanotype prints in one session, but I thought I would go through this in a little more detail um, in a little more of a demonstration with the washing process that can be a little tricky. Um, for this one, a lot of the cyanotype uh, uh, things that you're going to need are very similar. You'll need a a board or a piece of heavy cardboard to work on it's your work surface and then some clear um, this is clear plexiglass um, it's, I took it out of a frame you can see this is the frame backing and the frame so they fit together nicely although they do not have to be the same size um, this is a poster frame you can also sometimes buy this kind of sheeting at your local hardware store and it comes in really handy for cyanotypes uh, you're going to need, of course, your cyanotype mixing solutions, part A and part B. They come as a set. Um, you can order those from Amazon or sometimes find them at your local craft store. You'll need some kind of little container that you can use with a measuring, some kind of measuring level. You can mark a glass jar, uh, something like that will work, and then a jar or container such as this right here to put your solutions in as you mix them. I like to work on some paper plates and with some paper towels just to keep the mess contained. And I usually use a foam brush to put the cyanotype solution on my papers. You'll need some type of watercolor paper or mixed media paper. This one I like because it's of the 140 pound, 300 gram uh, watercolor paper. It absorbs the cyanotype solution really well and it's very thick and sturdy. And then you can use tissue paper, um, tissue type gift wrap, or I'll put in my, underneath the video, I'll put the link to the company that sells these beautiful handcrafted products from countries all over the world. And this one is just one of my favorites to use. If you're having, if you're stuck with a windy sort of day, you need sunshine, but you also sometimes get wind with that. I use these binder clips to hold things down. So that's what you need primarily for to get started. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how I mix my solutions. We have an A and a B. When you purchase this, either from Amazon or from your local craft supply store or one of the other stores like Michael's or Joann's, whoever might be carrying it, you'll need to mix it 24 hours ahead of time. It comes with a powder and you add water, shake it up, and then let it sit for about 24 hours before you use it. So I'm going to put my A solution, which is sort of a yellowish color, pour it into my container, close this up tight. Right now my shades are down. I don't have room lights turned on, so I'm keeping the room as dark as I can to prevent this from starting to turn too soon. The B solution is a darker color. Mix those together like so, and put that away. So I'm going to put those things aside, and I'll be using the solution and the brush. I mentioned that sometimes working with tissue papers or papers that are very thin can be a challenge. So I'm going to demonstrate one of these types of papers. This is a really beautiful handcrafted paper. I don't remember what country it's from, but I will post a link to the company that I purchased these types of papers from because it is really very, very beautiful. And what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to first paint 
my paper with the cyanotype solution. So I'm on my board and I'm just going to cover my watercolor paper with solution. And again, I'm in a darkened room. I like to work quickly because during the summer months, it's really hard to darken my room totally. So this working fast teaches you to work fast, get the job done, and get ready to move on. So I have this, and then I'm going to put this paper over, and it has a slightly raised surface on one side, so I'm going to have that raised surface up like so. And this is going to do a little bit of blocking of sunlight, but I'm also, I also want to dye it with the cyanotype solution. Again, it's that two for one. So I'll have some nicely dyed translucent paper and I'll also have a base layer that has a pattern. And again, I'll post the link to where to get these papers below the video. And like the other, this is going in the closet to dry. Okay, this is out of the closet now. It is ready to be exposed to sunlight. I'm not going to put anything over the top of it because it's still slightly damp. It's clinging to the paper quite nicely and it is not a windy day. So this one will go outside as is. This one could be interesting. I put this out, it's, um, I did some cyanotype solution on a piece of watercolor paper and then I put this thin tissue like paper over the top it's a handcrafted paper put cyanotype solution on that and then I put it out on the back deck today is kind of cloudy so I thought oh it's probably going to need an hour of exposure this was about 11 o'clock it is now going on three o'clock in the afternoon and in the meanwhile, I had forgotten about it. And I went to the grocery store and to the hardware store and to get some cold brew at Dunkin' Donuts and to drop off some things at the post office. And now I'm back. And I realized that this was out there. So I'm going to take it off and take it in the kitchen to the sink and while I'm doing that, this will be a really good opportunity for me to share with you how to rinse off a cyanotype that's done on these very thin papers. They're beautiful papers. Uh, most of them are made in Thailand, Japan, other Eastern countries. There's a few pretty ones from Spain and Italy. And I'll post a link to the source for you as well. And sticking in this one corner here, I'm trying to peel it off as carefully as I can. So I'm going to be rinsing off this piece that was underneath and exposed. I'm going, whoop, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to flip it over so that it doesn't get any more exposure. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put that on a piece of plexiglass because I can't really hold that under running water without it becoming shredded, basically. And I'm going to use my little clips. I'm going to put it on around like this. And I'm going to clip just gently in a few places around this piece of, that's acrylic or plexiglass that's sold. Uh, you can buy them at frame shops or you can take them out of frames that you're no longer using. That's another way to get these. And I'm just gonna clip a few spots so that when I put it under water, it doesn't move around too much and cause it to shred. Although I'm still going to have to be very careful. So we'll head to the kitchen and check this out.
turn on the cold water kind of lightly right here. And this first one is the piece of watercolor paper. And I'm just going to put it under the water. And I'm going to actually put it down inside the basin of the sink so that I can thoroughly run water over it. And I would do this step for quite some time, um, especially on a 300 pound uh, gram or whatever it is, watercolor paper, because it's going to take a while to rinse all of the chemicals out of the water so that you don't get any more exposure. And generally, you want to rinse until there's no more yellowish fluid coming off your paper. So I'm going to just let this run for a while. And even fill it up with a little bit of water. Yeah, just let the water sit in there. Until it runs clear. Now this one sat for a long time. What I'm seeing, it looks pretty nice. Um, I'm not getting a lot of runoff. I have good color, but it will change as the paper dries. And that's something to be aware of when you're rinsing your own. There will be some changes. If you notice as it's drying that it's yellowish in spots where you were expecting white, that means you've missed a spot with your rinsing and you might want to go through and just give it an extra rinse to get as much of that out as you can. So I'm going to pause this and get ready to do the other piece of paper. This is that very thin, fragile piece of handcrafted paper. I, I have it clipped to a piece of, um, oh, it's like acetate or acrylic. I'm some sheeting, it's from uh, a poster frame. And for this one, because I don't want to have any chance, or as little chance, because I've already got some holes just from lifting it off the paper that I made it on. I'm going to put it down into the sink. This is a very flexible sheet, so it can just sit right down there in the sink. And I'm going to use just a glass to gently pour water over it. So I'm just going to gently pour water on it rather than douse it. Another thing you can do is put the plug in your sink and just soak it for a while in the water. That works as well. This, I don't have one for this side of my sink, but this, so I'm just going to let it run through and rinse it. And you can see that that has really helped. This one has come loose, so I'll clip it back into place. Put it back in the sink again. I'm going to continue rinsing a little while longer just by pouring water down it. This finer paper does rinse pretty quickly. So now I have it rinsed out have a few little places where it got torn just a bit. And I'm not going to take it off of the plastic, plexiglass, whatever this stuff is. I'm just going to set it over on a towel to dry. All right, I let these dry overnight. This is the watercolor paper. It's a nice heavyweight, 140 pound. It's Canson watercolor paper comes in a large tablet. Um, at the, it's found at most craft stores or online at Amazon. This paper here is the handmade paper that I purchase from, I believe it's Graphics Corporation. I'll put a link to that site underneath this video. There are many beautiful papers that you can buy that are all handcrafted. This one does have a few holes in it. When I, Even though I had it on the sheet of plastic, um, I did hit it a little bit with the stream of water from my faucet, and you can see the results of that. But it has a really pretty raised surface on one side, 
that did not die out or take the color with the sensitizer solution. It all rinsed out. The other side does not have those raised fibers and you can see that it's a much darker print. So you have basically two ways that you can use this in a mixed media project. Underneath the video, I will have a link again to the company that I buy these papers from. And if you'd like to learn more about how to do cyanotype printmaking, I do have some other videos here on my YouTube channel. So check them out.